waiting on the threshold. Luke 1, 26 through 38. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and the divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, the Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This in a confused and confusing world is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and me. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.
Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Jubilee Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all our lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 89, 1-4, and 19-26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of all the people. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Paul concludes his letter to the Christians in Rome with a doxology, which is our reading on this fourth Sunday of Advent. A reading from Romans 16, 25 through 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 17, the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is the story of the Annunciation, the Archangel Gabriel's announcement to Mary that she will be the God-bearer. The, a reading from the gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored ones. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting that might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great among, and, and will be called the son of the most high. 
and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has been said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 15, the Song of Mary. <clears throat> my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. <clears throat> the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the father and to the son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to meditate on God's word to Mary and God's word to us. Amen. You hear the line often, once upon a time, we have lots of stories that start this way. Some of them are fairy tales, which we know are not really factual stories, but they have a point, a moral often for us. Or there are stories like the one you just heard in the gospel reading and in Mary's song. And those are stories that you and I know happened. Others also may believe them. They're nice stories that happened once upon a time, but they really did happen. But the question for us is, what does that have to do with us today? People in Anderson, wherever we're living right now, gathered together, what does this story have to do with us? Some 700 years ago, there was a mystic whose name was Meister Eckhart. He had some wonderful things to say, though the church didn't often agree with him. And in fact, he was once banned by the church, excommunicated. And when he died, he was still waiting to find out whether the Pope would uphold the ban, which the Pope did. But Meister Eckhart never knew it. But his words have echoed through the years, and many of us have come to see them as being important words for today. And listen to what he's had to say about that question. What does this story have to do with us? Meister Eckhart said this 700 years ago. What good is it to me that Mary gave birth to the Son of God 1,400 years ago? And I do not also give birth to the Son of God in my time and in my culture. Let me read that again and update it to our time, to 2,100 years ago when this birth happened. What good is it to me that Mary gave birth to the Son of God 2,100 years ago, and I do not also give birth to the Son of God in my time? and in my culture. 
I ask you to look at that with me in the context of that gospel reading and most especially of Mary's song that Christy read to us. There are really two parts to what Eckhart was saying. One part was my time, my life. And the other part is my culture, my society. The my time for Mary was a time of obedience to God in spite of this very difficult message. She was betrothed, engaged. She was not married to Joseph. And yet here she was to become pregnant, something that could have her stoned to death in that society at that time. And yet in her obedience, she said simply, let it be, let it be to me according to your will. And Mary is an amazing example of faith. She also, in her time, praised God for what God had done. She praised God's greatness. And she also looked to what she would get benefit, what she would get out of all this that Gabriel was saying to her. She said that God had blessed her, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant, and the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And then she looked to the future, much as the disciples would look and said, all generations will call me blessed. That's Mary's time. But in our time, Eckhart's question is, what does this birth mean to me? Is this birth something that happened only once upon a time, a long time ago, and it's a nice story, but really has no relevance for my life, other than being something very sentimental that warms my heart? If that's all it is, just a nice story, or if our response is, gee, wouldn't it be great if? That's what Eckhart is saying. What does it mean if it's not a birth that happens in our time? When Eckhart was talking about the culture, he was talking about the society in Mary's time and what it was like back then. And you know, that was a society, they were conquered, they were occupied by the Romans. Religion wasn't really a free thing, like as we know religion today. Religion felt it had to get along with the occupying forces in order to survive. We saw that clearly in the events just before Jesus' death, how religion would just play what, all the, what the government really wanted it to say and do. It was a classed society, something that some people in our time have called a caste society. There were the wealthy landowners and the occupiers, and there were the poor people, the majority of the people who served the occupiers and the wealthy ones. And then Mary's song addressed this. And Mary's song is not just a nice song, it's also a revolutionary song. He has scattered the proud in their deceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. One writer said that what Mary was proclaiming was not a Roman economy, but God's economy. That writer went on to say that Mary proclaimed a reality that equalized the Roman Empire. Her song proclaims a topsy-turvy, beautiful new reality for all people. Mary proclaims God's economy. Not the reality of her time, but a revolutionary new view of 
what she saw God had in mind for God's people. Our culture, our society today, you know very well. You hear about it all the time on the news and in the newspaper. We are a divided people, divided over issues. We're divided over race and gender and so forth, all the other things that we use to divide us. We're divided over access to the necessities of life, especially in this time when people are about to be evicted, the eviction protection is about to end, when more people are hungry than ever were before in our time, and in the world, people are starving, not just hungry. What do these words of Mary's song say to this? He has scattered the proud in their deceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. I think Meister Eckhart's words and Mary's song call us to a renewed vision of God for our time. To a reality that, as that writer I quoted said, equalizes the world, that turns the world into a topsy-turvy, beautiful new reality for all people, that creates God's economy, not the economy we have known in our world, but God's economy. Listen again to Meister Eckhart's words, but I'm going to include some additional words of what he had to say. He said, what good is it to me that Mary gave birth to the Son of God 2,100 years ago, and I do not also give birth to the Son of God in my time and in my culture? And then he added these words. We are all meant to be mothers of God. God is always needing to be reborn. We are all meant to be mothers of God. God is always needing to be reborn. That topsy-turvy image of God's economy is to be reborn in us in our actions, in what we do. Eckhart repeated himself many times, and he had one other quote where he said these words. We are all meant to be mothers of God. What good is it to me if this eternal birth of the divine Son takes place unceasingly, but does not take place within myself? And what good is it to me if Mary is full of grace and I am not also full of grace? What good is it to me if the Creator is to give birth to his Son, if I do not also give birth to him in my time and in my culture? This, then, is the fullness of time when the Son of God is begotten in us. May it be so this Christmas that it's not a celebration of once upon a time, but of the birth of God in us. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The colic for today. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. the people form six in peace we pray to you lord god for all people in their daily life and work for our families friends and neighbors and for those who are alone for donald our president joe our president-elect eric our governor thomas our mayor this community the nation and the world for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For an end to racism and all of the isms that divide God's human creation, for the homeless, unemployed, or underemployed, and for the just and proper use of your creation, for all who suffer in the pandemic, for all medical personnel and emergency service workers who help them and us, for all who suffer from the wildfires and stormy weather and those who aid these people, for prisoners and refugees, for the victims of hunger, fear, and injustice and oppression. 
For those who are hospitalized, Nancy, Shirley, Catherine, and those in convalescent centers, Teddy, Hannah Mae, Sonia, Betsy, Barbara, Carol, Bonnie, and others in need of God's strength, Ryan, the Caudill family, Nancy, Pat, Aubrey, Connie, Nikki, Connie, Nora, and Kaylee. For John, Amy, Chris, Missy, David, Earl, Beverly, Aletha, Nikki, Beth, Bill, Irene, Shirley, Betty, John, John Matthew, Fred, Elva, Kyle, Benny, Carol, Ron, and for all who have tested positive for COVID, Bruce, Karen, and Catherine. For our men and women in the armed forces, Audrey McMillan Cole, Justine Gardner, Jessica Halliday, Brandon Hollowell, Greg, Chaz Hewlett, Micah Jones, Chris Call, Brian Casper, Amanda Conover, McAllister, Tyler McEwen, Melissa Payne, Nathan Payne, Travis Reed, Allison Woodruff, and Zach Webb. I'm sorry, Kay, you'll need to unmute yourself. <laughs> okay, sorry. For all who are in danger or sorrow or any kind of trouble, for the police, the firefighters, the emergency personnel, and all who work for our safety in our communities, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Bill, our clergy, our companion diocese, Brasilia, and their bishop, Mauricio. For Boar in the Sudan and their bishop, Reuben, the people of Haiti and their bishop, Zache. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray, pray for mission agencies and their ministry throughout the Anglican communion, including the Mother's Union, around the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Nativity in Indianapolis, the Reverend Larry Walters, the Reverend Karen Sullivan, for all the baptized and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in God's church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life in our parish community today. We pray for Helen Nicholson, Ron Oldham, and we remember Jack Nicholson, who died in 2009, and Marilyn Oldham, who died in 2015. Yeah, thanks for the presence of vaccines against this terrible virus. Please give thanks and remembrance of the newest members of the Swain family. Today is Jeremiah's uh, sixth birthday with the Swains. Give them thanks. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for Carol and Nard Nardar uh, Thorpe, Kurt Icon, Scott Coates, Dale Fowler, and for all who have died that they may have a place in your internal kingdom. 
the general thanksgiving. On Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth our praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.